la da 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 Hey guys, Blender Beetle here. Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be making a tutorial on the selection tool. Uh, this tool is similar to the edit tool. The chief difference is, well, with the edit tool, you can do shear and position and all of that. It's only moving the way you're viewing the level around. It's not actually editing the images. The edit tool is editing your original images. So it's destructive in that, like destructive versus non-destructive. You may hear this t term when talking about, say, a video program where a non-destructive program will link to the videos, but they won't actually uh, edit the original files, whereas a destructive program would uh, take the files and just edit what's actually there. So this selection tool, once you've made an edit, once you've made a change, it will update the actual PNG image over here in your level. So we're going to do it in all, well, really two of the three level types because there's only one small difference between raster and tunes raster and I'll just go over that when we get to it. First things first, you've got how you're selecting. selecting. Like most, it's got a couple different options. You've got the rectangle. This is just a raster so it's treating these like they're all pixels. And taking a rectangle you can edit all of it, edit a little piece, and all that normal that you would expect a selection tool to have. Freehand just is comparable to a lasso tool in another program. Only difference is you cannot click off of it and still have that lasso going. It doesn't work like that. Polyline, like the other polylines, I have figured out that to close it off, double click. It's still a little bit of a pain in the butt to close it where you want it to, but it's less of a pain in the butt when I was just trying to match it up with the end, which was actually never going to work. So let's go to rectangle just for the sake of simplicity. Um, the next option is no anti-aliasing. That just means it's not going to soften your edges. like got a nice hard edge here. If we're say in freehand, let's go ahead and rewind that. If we're in freehand, we pull it out. If no anti-aliasing isn't clicked, you'll see it's kind of actually not doing a very good job of it, but normally it would have some uh, semi-transparent pixels on the edge trying to uh, trying to kind of shift and soften the edge from the hard to the soft. Um, with no anti-aliasing on, it's practically the same right now, which means that it's not very good in this tool. Mm. Moving on, you have the high, horizontal and vertical scaling. The scaling, unlike in the edit tool, if you watch my edit tool, you the scaling was based on specific numbers because you're just editing the way that you view it, so you can change the height and the and the the height and the width as much as you want, and it doesn't actually ever change a single pixel. With the edit tool, because you're changing pic actual pixels, you get percentages, and as you move it down, you see those percent percentages move, and you can hold the shift button if you want, and that's going to constrain your constrain proportions so that you can keep it the same height and width. Another thing you can do is you can press this link option which you will still when doing this be able to change the height and width at different rates but if you come over here and just kind of drag it will adjust them. Word of warning though for that option if you do this and you change it and then you click off of it your horizontal and vertical aren't there anymore. These are now locked in place and you have to undo if you want to back. Okay, so after link, you've got rotation. That is 
just like you'd expect and you get you can edit with numbers up here just like any other time you can go ahead and say you want a 45 degree angle and it's going to turn like that instead what you can also do is just rotate it like this if you hold the shift it will rotate in uh, more controlled chunks um, that was a weird way to select for this this is position so it's changing how high and low remember for a raster and an open tunes raster if you get it off the screen and then you pull it back it's gone it won't come back it do, it's not like the it's not like the vector where you don't have a bounding box for the edge that's mostly it what I'm going to say there's another kinda cool feature see I've got everything selected one thing I can do is if I hold the control it's like the shear option I can edit it in oopsie I can edit it in more ways than just scaling and uh, rotating and this can be really cool if you want to make it look like a flat plane but you want to draw the picture like normal say you wanted to draw a dragon but that dragon's supposed to be on a book that is on a shelf and you don't want to draw the angle at this funky draw the dragon at this funky angle you can do it like that and that's one one use of that tool there's plenty of applications that you kind of just have to play with to figure them out but that works in all three of all three level types so past raster we come to tunes raster this is pretty much the same as raster one difference you'll find is that over here you've got modify save box the modify save box option from what I was able to figure out from the internet that option is related to cleanup and honestly I don't know how it works I can't get my cleanup options to work on my computer at all like none of its none of it is working in my program so I'm not going to go over that um so that's pretty much the only difference for raster and tunes raster tunes vector has a lot more options so we've got the rectangle freehand and polyline like we had in the other one but then there's this mode section standard means that it's gonna select what you click on another thing for the the shift holding down shift you can select more than one if you don't have it held down you can only select one at a time and you can't deselect holding shift you can also deselect things without having to say click off of it um after standard mode you have select frames select frame selected frames I tried doing it over here and it doesn't work you you have to be over here in the level palette and just come over here and we select the frames we want to edit then we select this and you can scale it down notice all of them scaled down and when you come over here it's gonna the ones you had selection are scaled down but the ones you didn't have selected they are untouched you can do it for rotation as well or pretty much pretty much anything any way you could edit it normally you can edit in selected frames whole level is just gonna change the whole level no matter what frames are selected you come over here and notice they're all squished now uh, same style this is why I have two styles on here it's gonna collect you click literally everything that has the style applied so say I were to change this one to red there you go change this one to red when I go to select it it's gonna select that one it's on the same style it's gonna select all all three of them it will only select the black ones if I'm over here it doesn't matter what style you're in over here at this at the moment it's whatever you click on anything that's that same style you can move it around you can rotate it and it will do that next option is same style on selected frames that's similar to selected frames in that only the ones you select will be edited but it's different in that it's still gonna be 
the same style with the selected frames. Notice something funny over here. You had this extra line got moved because it is the same style. So these all, this black one didn't get touched because it's the same style. This one because this one, because we changed it to red, gets moved over here. Same style on whole level is going to do the same thing as the whole level. It's going to adjust the same style for every frame in that level. Boundary strokes? Honestly, I'm not sure why this is an option. Because a boundary stroke selects the fill inside it anyway. I haven't been able to figure out what the use of this would be, but it does select anything that's a boundary. Boundaries on selected frames and whole level work the same one as the selected frames and whole levels we've already been over. Preserve thickness is Basically what that means is as you scale it up and down, it's going to keep how thick the lines are. So this doesn't look like it's preserved it, but say we turn it all the way down to here and then we move it up. You notice how thin those lines are and if we did that without preserving the thickness, when you scale it up, these ones are much thicker than they were before. So. The other thing to note that I forgot to say, there's this really cool looking thing over down here that's like a line in, it's, it looks like that when you're in on the X sheet. And when you scroll over it, you're going to get that little pump. That's actually a shortcut to this tool. And what it's going to do is it's going to make your lines thicker or thinner, thicker or thinner. It's gorgeous. It works really well. And it's good, especially if you are working, trying to adjust full lines at once. One thing it's not good for is you can only make the line thicker and thinner the whole line. You can't do individual points or anything. Um, these, the horizontal, vertical, rotation, all of this works the same way. You see we have the pump, the pump up here. We can change the thickness. Then you got this stuff over here. Honestly, this stuff to me is very confusing. So you've got, it, I'll tell you why in a sec. You've got how to end, how you want the end to look, which is pretty straightforward. You've got flat, you've got a rounded end. See how that turned to rounded now. And you can also have just straight flat. The difference between this one and this one is if you see this dotted line, this dotted line is where the line actually ends. And if you do that one, it ends a little bit after the dotted line. If you do that top one, it ends directly at the edge. So we're going to put that on rounded just, just for the heck of it. This has to do with how your corners are. Notice this corner just changed. You've got straight or like a corner, corner type corner, rounded, and then a, a harsh edge. Next to it, you've got this thing called miter. I thought it was called meter, but having looked up some YouTube videos, apparently not. This is the threshold and has to do with when your points become pointy, if that makes any sense. We're going to go down here. You'll see down here we've got the four different types and I, when I was using boxes I couldn't get much to happen. And I found out it's because I needed a much more jagged line to kind of show the effects. So if we just Give a lovely curly line here. If we set this one to this and we set the miter, the miter threshold to zero, you're going to get a lot of flat edges, very similar to when this is set to this. In fact, exactly the same as when this is set to this. If you come over here and change the miter threshold, say one, nothing ha- Whoa, oh, that's 16. One, nothing really has happened because it hasn't hit the threshold yet. I just keep tend to keep going up and notice we've got a point now. That one has is enough in the threshold to become a point. Four made that one go. 
five, nothing happened. And I'm, I'm trying to see if I go high enough, will that one become a point? So nine, see it's become a point now. So it really, it really uh, controls how pointy your edges get. That one stumped me for a while because I couldn't figure out what was going on. I was trying to do it with a square. I eventually had to look it up in the Krita manual, which thankfully a lot of these things are similar in different programs. So remember, if you're ever having trouble with an option and it's one you know you've seen somewhere else, go find another art program that has it, look it up in their manual. Most of the time you will get your an the answer you're looking for. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. If you liked it, be sure to give me a thumbs up. If you have any tutorials you'd like to see in the future, be sure to leave your comments in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to comment and subscribe.